In this video, I just want to quickly chat about one or two things that students often get wrong or struggle with. So this is just to, to keep, keep in the back of their mind. Don't memorize anything. Just listen and watch out for this. The first thing is time value of money basics. So when we calculate value, the present value of operations, we'll usually have a planning period and then a perpetuity thereafter. That's the, so the final year, um, we will calculate the final year and that will grow at a constant growth rate forever. So it's a perpetuity, a normal perpetuity. And remember the value for the perpetuity is just the cash flow divided by the discount rate. Obviously, if the cash flow grows at a constant rate, we have to deduct the growth rate from the discount rate. So that is similar to, do you remember the present value of a share is the dividend, which is a cash flow, divided by KE minus G. It's the same principle. So let's just look at an example. So say we have a planning period of two years, and that you'll always be guided by this, the question, the scenario. So they give you two years, and then the perpetuity starts, or the constant growth starts from, from the next year onwards. So we'll have the, the operating cash flows in year one, that's the next year. Remember, we are in year zero, that's the present value. So if you take a timeline, we are here, that's year zero. The first year is this part, first year, that's in the column one. So that's the, the coming year. Then you have year two, we'll have operating cash flows. And then from there onwards, they'll say it'll grow at a constant rate of say 6%. So we'll calculate year three, that would be year two times 1.06 to add the 6%. Now we have to calculate the terminal value, that is our perpetuity. So sometimes to refer to as terminal value. How do we do that? We'll take next year's cash flow. So in terms of year two, so we are standing at the end of year two. We are standing here in this column. We look to next year, that's year three. We'll divide it by the discount rate, which is WAC, minus the constant growth rate, which is our 6% that we add. So it's cash flow minus WAC minus G, or divided by WAC minus G, and that'll give us our terminal value. But the terminal value will be at the end of year two. Remember, it's next year's cash flow gives us this year's present value. So we'll put that terminal value in the year two column. Now we can calculate our net cash flow. So year one, we only have that year's cash flows. Year two, we have the year two cash flows plus the terminal value. And now, remember that's still in year one and two, so we have to discount each of those back to today to get to our present value of operating cash flows or present value of operations in year zero, the present value. So just be careful not to um, make a mistake with this terminal value because what students sometimes do is they keep this cash flow in year three and they show the terminal value so they're basically double counting that cash flow in year three so remember you don't show this one you just use it to calculate the terminal value and that ends up in year two so the only cash flows you have is year one cash flows and year two cash flows plus the terminal value that's the first thing so terminal value and time value of money basics next watch out for Balances versus movement. So we want cash flows, operating cash flows in each of these years. So when we do the working capital, we must not take the balance. So if they say working capital is 10% of the next year's sales, you can calculate the 10%, but that's our balance at the start of the year. So calculate the balance at the start of the year and at the end of the year, and then the difference would be our movement, and that is our cash flow. So an increase in a balance is a decrease in cash flow, and a decrease in, a, in a, an asset balance is an increase in cash flow. So asset goes up, working capital asset goes up, cash comes down, so it's a negative cash flow because we have to tie it up, we invest it in the working capital. And then finally, once we've taken the present value of operations plus the present value of non-operating assets, that's our investments, investment property, etc. Minus the present value of debt and preference shares. We'll get the present value of our equity, basically. That's what we valued. 
then just watch out if they said value a 70 percent share of the company you have to multiply it by 70 percent to get to the value that we are willing to pay for that 70 percent share those are just some of the things to watch out for that students uh, regularly make mistakes in